Hello, and welcome to the Scientific Adventures of Beard Man. Today we're going to be looking at the third right-hand rule, which is a part of electromagnetism. And in particular, it talks about what happens if we have a magnetic field, say we've got a magnet here, and so we've got a magnetic field, and we move a particle through it. Well, if we're moving a charged particle, that's going to create its own magnetic field, in essence becoming a magnet. And so if we move a charge through a pre-existing magnetic field, we would expect it to be pushed. Just like if we put two magnets together, we expect them to be pushed. So if there's some magnetic field from some source, and we move a particle through that, we'd expect it to get pushed. Today we're going to look at the direction of that push. Once again, we have a right-hand rule, and that's called the third right-hand rule. Okay, The third right-hand rule uh, says you put your thumb with the direction of the current. So in other words, if this is a wire that the, wire, that the particles are moving through, then you just use your typical current. But if it is a charged particle, like an electron or a proton, then you have to remember, a, a conventional current is the direction a positive charge would go. So if it's a proton moving this way, we put our thumb this direction. If it's an electron moving that direction, well, if an electron is moving this way, if that was like in a wire, our conventional current would be opposite of that. So if an electron moves up, you put your uh, thumb down. Okay. So just put it the opposite of a negative, of the direction a negative charge is moving. Once you've got the direction the negative charge is, uh, once you have the direction the positive charge is moving, or the direction of the conventional current, then you put your entire forearm the direction that uh, the magnetic field is pointing. So if our pre-existing magnetic field is pointing this way, we put our arm this way. If our proton is moving up, we put our proton this direction. And then the direction the proton will be pushed is the direction your palm is facing. So that's facing me away from you. Okay. If it was an electron moving up through this same magnetic field, we'd put our thumb down, and the electron would be pushed this direction. Okay. Um, this is uh, actually how they uh, used to make TVs. If you remember the big old fat old TVs before we got our nice uh, LCDs and plasma displays. Um, uh, it had in the back of it basically something shooting electrons that would go through a magnetic field, an electromagnet, that you could then change the strength of that electromagnet and that would bend the electrons up or down to hit a various point on the screen. And it would hit, for color TVs, it would, it would be pointed right at a white phosphor, which is something that will glow white when it hits it, or at a red one if that is the part of a screen where somebody's red shirt is, or it'll shoot at the green phosphor right next to it. And so computer screens had these many different colored phosphors all over it, and the electrons would be targeted at different parts of the screen. And we get a nice color picture display. Okay, but once again, that came because there was some magnetic field that's already there. You put your arm with that. The electrons are moving in a direction, so you have to put your thumb opposite the direction they're going, and that would push the electron up. Okay, you flip the magnetic field, okay, and the electron will get put, or uh, the the electron will get pushed down. Okay, um, and so that's the third right-hand rule. That's how uh, charges are affected. Um, uh, in a moving magnetic field. Now keep in mind, it, we learned with velocity way back when that you velocity is relative. And so it doesn't matter if the charge is moving or if the magnetic field is moving. Okay, so if we have a magnetic field moving past the charge, that will push the charge. Okay, so if we had a wire here and we moved a magnetic field past it, we'd get a current in that wire. Okay. Now that uh, wire, keep in mind, just has to be metal. It doesn't have to be a magnetic. Uh, it doesn't have to be magnetic metal. It doesn't have to be iron, nickel, cobalt. It can be a copper or aluminum. Okay. Get any of those types of metals, and you move a magnetic field past it, and you'll get a current uh, through it. 
one way of talking about the direction of the current that's produced is something called Lenz's Law. Okay, and Lenz's Law basically says that the current that is produced will oppose the change in magnetic field that produced it. So if we take a metal plate and we move a magnet past it, it, will, it can create a magnetic uh, a current in this uh, piece of metal, and that will essentially try and keep this, this uh, magnet from moving. Okay, it's good for slowing things down like friction is, but it's not very good for speeding them up. Okay, because it's going to oppose the motion. So that if this is falling and it goes past this piece of metal, that will create a current in the metal that will create a magnetic field that will oppose the magnetic field that is, create, that is creating it. Okay, so that's Lenz's law. Uh, a magnetic field moving through a conductor will create a, a current whose magnetic field will oppose the magnetic field that created it. And that's the end of electrostatics as we're going to discuss it. Uh, hope you have a great day and enjoyed learning here on the Scientific Adventures of Beer Man.